Hello, today I would like to show you something that we're calling the reservation booking system for ServiceNow. Um, one piece of functionality that has traditionally been missing from ServiceNow is the um, ability to to allow users to make reservations, to track those reservations, to report on them, um, in general to manage them on your ServiceNow instance. Um, by reservations, we could really talk about anything. Um, it could be service desk reservations, it could be uh, conference room reservations, it could be restaurant reservations. Um, really anything's open, we're still looking at the same basic data structures for each of these. And that's what we're trying to bring to you with this reservation booking system. As usual, this is available out on share.servicenow.com. Just come on out to share, search for reservation booking system, and you can download that just like a standard update set and apply it to your instance. Once we have that installed, let's look over here. You can search for bookings in the instance, post install, and you'll see we have a whole set of new modules over here. Um, first of all, I want to cover the basic data structure that these modules are using. Um, there are three key tables involved here. One is this schedule templates table. One is a schedule table. And the final is the reservation table. Um, these are all pretty key, and I want to jump over to a slide to show you how these interplay with one another um, to make this flow easily. So what are the key data structure needs for a reservation system? Uh, first of all, we do need to have a template for schedules. When we talk about templates, we're saying what is the normal weekly schedule? And that would be, say, what time slots do we have on Monday? Um, how many slots do we have open on Monday? How many resources are available? So that is a schedule template table. As you can see here, it's just Monday with some time slots. You can have certain capacity in those time slots. Um, but it's if things are at a steady state, chugging along, what's our, our weekly schedule? From that, we can spawn the actual schedule. So here you see we have Monday and then a certain date from 8 to 8.30. This is the actual schedule um, against which reservations can be booked. Once these actual schedule records are spawned, then you can edit those. Say it's a holiday during one day of the week. You can go ahead and remove that from the schedule. Um, maybe you're expecting high usage during a certain day or a certain time during a day. You can add additional capacity during that time. But these schedule entries on the schedule table are where you can make specific accommodations for the actual schedule in real time. And finally, once you have a schedule, users can start to book reservations against it. So user goes out, books a reservation. Joe Employee has a, has a help desk reservation. My email is broken. He takes that time slot and it disappears from the schedule. So that's no longer available. You can't, can't any longer bug there. And that's assuming you have one um, resource available during that time. You could have two, three, 20 resources available and they would decrement down as reservations are made during those times. Then another reservation comes in, an HR info discussion. That slot goes and is no longer available. You know, finally we have a, a restaurant reservation for dinner for two and the final slot goes away. So essentially you have a schedule, people are booking reservations against that schedule, and as the reservations get booked, um, our availability in the schedule begins to decrease based on our configuration. Now, back on our instance, we can look at this data structure and see how it plays out. So first of all, for our schedule templates, let's look at our schedule templates. We see we have a real basic one set up here already. Click into that, and we have some annotations up here to, to remind you how this works um, in the future. But a base schedule template, we can see that it's active. We have a start time, business start each day at 9 o'clock, end time of 5 o'clock. Um, each reservation length is a configurable length. We'll say 30 minutes for the basic schedule. Uh, we'll say we have one resource available throughout the day. Again, you could put multiples. Um, we want to schedule 14 days in advance. Um, how many days in advance do we want to make our schedule available so that people can make reservations? Um, for two weeks, for a year, for one day, it's up to you. And then which days of the week are we open? Here we have Monday through Friday. Once that is done, we can click down here on Generate Template Slots. And this is going to take this template and generate um, the slots throughout the week. Click there. It's going to give us a warning that it'll override any existing slots. Click OK. And now beneath here, we'll see we have all the slots set up. For each day of the week, start time and time, it's, it's just built out each of these um, slots. Here's Friday 9 9.30, number of resources 1. Here's our Thursday 9.30 to 10. So now we have our boilerplate schedule, and we can go in here and change these things if we want to. Say if on Tuesday from 9 to 9.30 we actually have two resources available, we can make that change. Um, say Monday from 9.30 to 10 we have zero resources available, we can't have anybody there, we can make that change. And this is just setting up what our weekly schedule is going to be. So once we're happy with our weekly schedule, the standard, the norm, we can click on Generate Schedule Days. And this is going to go out and generate 14 days with this schedule in real time. 
So we click on that. It's going to give us a warning that says it's going to um, delete and recreate all future schedule slots. So if you have an existing schedule, this is going to override all those, but attempt to reassociate any reservations that may currently already exist. Click OK. It's going to chug along a little bit, generate those schedules. Now we can go up and look at all schedules. And we'll see, here's a listing of all of our schedules built out. So we did 14 days, so that goes into the next three weeks a little bit. And if we look at these, we'll say, here is our schedule on September 12th, 4.30 to, uh, to 5. Here's 4 to 4.30. Total resources, available resources. This is built out our real-time schedule. And um, right now it's very basic. Um, no reservations have been made. This is just our schedule. How many resources we have available. This is, this is what people can now book against. So now, if we look at reservations, we'll see that we don't currently have any reservations. No one has booked anything. So how do we let our users book reservations? Uh, if you look over here in the left nav, you'll see we have a book a reservation link. We'll click that and you'll see a standard record producer. This is the UI that we've built to allow users to, um, to interact with the system, to book reservations. And because it's a standard record producer, you could put this on a CMS page, you could put this in your service catalog, anywhere you like. So if we click on the calendar, we can pull it up and say we want to make a reservation for the 16th. Um, it'll give us a list of the times that are available straight from our schedule. So let's try to do one at 9 a.m. We'll do it for Able Tutor. I need help with my new Mac. You can click Submit. It's going to go out and make his reservation. And then give him a quick confirmation. Thanks for your reservation. You'll receive a confirmation email shortly. And he'll get a confirmation email as well as an Outlook calendar invite to remind him of that reservation. So now if we go back to book a reservation again, let's try that same day, September 16th. Because we only had one resource available then, we'll see that now that 9 o'clock slot is gone. Um, we still have the rest of the day, but 9 o'clock is gone. So we'll let this user make one for 1 p.m. Say it's for Eileen. It's just a test reservation. Click Submit. So now if we go back and look at our reservations, we'll see that we have two listed, both for the 16th at their respective times. Um, we've given you a few different ways to look at this data because we understand that it needs to be easy and quick for your techs when they're working reservations. So they can look at today's reservations, just an easy list. Today we have none so far. We look at this week's reservations, end of the week, but next week's, here are our two reservations, both on Tuesday. You can see them there. You can also look at a calendar and say here are reservations on the calendar. We can change the view if we want to see, depending on how we want to see that data. So once we have a reservation, here's that 9 o'clock for Able Tutor. We can click into that and we'll see a quick record of here's the user, here's the start time and end time, short description. Um, if the user cancels, you can cancel the reservation from here. Um, if the user no shows, you can click that here. This is all good for reporting. Um, but if the user shows up, we'll say in this case it's a service desk reservation. Just click Create Incident and it'll pop it over to an incident. It'll populate the short description, the user as you would expect. And then in addition, down in the work notes, we're going to tell you that this was generated from a reservation so you can know where that came from. And you can make similar UI actions for restaurant reservations, for any kind of reservation that you're working with. And we saw a moment ago how we can cancel reservations. Uh, if Eileen, say she called up and she wanted to cancel her reservation, I could do that for her. I could open a reservation, um, click on cancel, and then that slot in the schedule would open back up. Um, but perhaps I don't want to have to do that. We want users to self-serve. So if I log in as Eileen, she could actually come out here on her own and say this is in the service catalog. Here's book a reservation. If she clicks on that, she's at the reservation um, screen. She can actually click here to view her existing reservations. And that's going to pop up to her existing reservation. She can go straight into that and she can cancel it herself. And that's great. So now she's canceled her reservation and that's gone. And if we go back in and look at our existing reservations, actually at our schedule, we'll notice that, first of all, our capacity during this week is now back to full again because Eileen canceled her reservation. We can also see down here that here was a reservation that Abel had before, and so we can see that it decremented that to available equals zero whenever he had that, that reservation. So um, as users are making reservations, canceling reservations, we're managing the available resources for you, so you don't have to worry about it. And in a nutshell, that's it. Um, there are a couple of additional nice features here. Um, we do have several views, as I mentioned before. We also have an overview calendar, which isn't going to look like much right now, but it shows you the trends of how many reservations are being created per week. Uh, what happened with last week's reservations? How many no-shows? How many cancels? How many completed? What are your most popular reservation days? Which days do you maybe need more resources? And even what are your most popular slots? So you can find out how users are making reservations and where you might need to have more resources available. 
And then in addition, we have some properties here, um, a description of how the app works, um, some reference material, and then um, just some additional properties to help you customize how things work. And this can handle more than one reservation um, or more than one scheduled template. Say so you have uh, different help desks in different locations that have different templates. You are able to manage multiple different schedule templates and schedules at different locations and put those on different record producers, different interfaces. So very flexible. Um, it's a it's a nice data structure we built out here along with a nice and simple interface for your users to interact with and we think it's going to open a lot of doors for um for different service models for your help desk um for any place where you might need to to manage reservable resources like this so thanks a lot let us know if you have any any feedback on this and we hope you find it useful thanks